I've got five things right here that will save your fish. Let's talk about it right now. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when new content is posted. It also tells YouTube that something good is going on here and encourages YouTube to suggest the channel to other fish keepers like you and me. That's, that's how the channel grows. Thank you. Okay, let's get into it. Item number one, you need a tank. You need a small tank like this one. And the reason you need this tank is that at some point you're going to notice something strange going on with one of your fish. Maybe there's a, a growth. Maybe there's a sunken belly. Maybe there's a sore somewhere. Maybe there's some fin rot, something. You're going to want to take that fish out of the aquarium and put them somewhere. Ideally, you'll have a five gallon tank like this. this. Somewhere between five and ten gallons works. Usually I prefer something smaller because uh, when you start to medicate, if you have a big tank, it's gonna cost you a lot of money because meds are expensive. Five gallon tank doesn't cost that much to medicate. So uh, have a tank, something like this will run you, I don't know, you can get it on sale maybe for anywhere from 20 to 50 bucks or less. And that includes uh, a glass lid. If you have a fish that's a jumper, and so you want something that'll cover all the way to the back. So number one, a tank. Item number two, you want to be able to filter that tank. And so something like this, a sponge filter. Here's one from a company called Hyger. Very simple, very simple sponge filter. You can pick them up very inexpensively. You can pick them up on eBay for almost nothing. I've got them at my Amazon store. Uh, you can pick them up for like 10 bucks. I mean, they're really cheap. Uh, here's another one from uh, my friends over at Sarah, the L150, a very simple uh, tube and a sponge. Now, if you're gonna use these kinds of systems, any kind of a system that uses something that has a detachable sponge, keep the sponge in a filter somewhere in an established tank or in a sump. In my case, I keep a lot of sponge, uh, a lot of sponges in the sump underneath this 210. So that if I need to set up the tank immediately, I pull a sponge out of the 210 sump and I attach it to one of these filters and I'm good to go. I have an instantly, instantly cycled uh, quarantine tank or hospital tank. Item number three, you need to be able to keep that tank warm. If you don't have a, if you don't have a heated fish room, uh, this, is, this one stays comfortable but the truth is it, is it can get cold outside sometimes. So having a small heater, something like this, you can also pick up those, those small little discs from Aquion, the 15 watt uh, heaters. For something like 10 watt, I would prefer something like this. And uh, this is a aqua top, and you can pick these up relatively inexpensively. You just drop this in and, and let it go, and it'll, it's usually set right at 78, right from the factory. Certainly monitor it. Item number four. You're gonna to wanna to keep a, a close eye, a close eye on that fish. So you want this little tank, you want the little tank to be well lit. And uh, here's a, a light from Phoenix. I think this is called the Phoenix Barracuda JLC18. JLC18. This will attach to the side of that 10 gallon and actually do a real good job in, in allowing you to keep a good eye on the sore or the sunken belly or whatever you know, whatever malady was going on with that fish, so you can really uh, determine if the fish is making progress. After you, start, uh, after you start treating the fish, you should start seeing some results. If you don't see results within, a, within three, four days, something's wrong, something's, you're, not, you're not using the right meds, something is going on, okay? Now, last, but certainly not least, maybe the most important, you need to have some meds on hand. And uh, in my case, uh, I have some, uh, some Fritz Marison, very good antibiotic. I have some of this. I have some Paracleans. This is for uh, parasites, sunken belly, long stringy poops, things like that. I'll use the Paracleans. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll use me, uh, Metro. I have Met Metroplex, Metro, and uh, a little bit of Focus, which is a little bit like a garlic product that helps the fish 
you can soak the food in these products and that way they'll be sure to ingest, ingest the meds and the focus helps the fish to, it makes it appealing to the fish. Be sure to check the expiration dates by the way on your meds and uh, try not to use them if they're beyond their ex expiration date because they do lose their potency. It's also a good idea to have a little salt laying around and uh, other types of powerful antibiotics. Something like a Furon, this is a Furon 2, a Furon 2 product from uh, API. It's a pretty strong med. And again, this one is um, expires September uh, 2022. So this has a few more months left, at which, at which time I'm just gonna have to toss it and replace it. All right, uh, have some salt. Salt is really good, especially if you have a fish that's constipated and is starting to blow it out on you. I found that this aquarium salt tends to work pretty well. Now, one tip. If you use some of those, if you use some of those sponge filters that I showed you a second ago, you're gonna also need a pump. So uh, some of you don't have that. You don't have a pump and you don't have an extra pump. That's why something like this, an all-inclusive hang-on back. This is a little mini hang-on back system. You can find these on the internet. This is just a, little, a simple hang-on back filter with a, with a sponge filter cover. Really good if you have fry, <coughs> small fish, or something that you don't wanna have sucked up into the filter. And uh, you, can take, you can take filter media that's been in the sump and just put it into this chamber here and, or just float, float this sponge in, in your hang on back filter or in the sump. And then when you're ready to use this, you just put it on and you should be good to go. You should have an instantly cycled. There should be enough beneficial bacteria between that and a piece of filter material that you would put in here and all the, your, your tank is now good to go. You have nothing to worry about. If you want to be extra sure, uh, grab a couple cupfuls of substrate from your established tank and put those in the 10 gallon tank. That'll uh, import additional beneficial bacteria. So there you have it. Uh, the, the final tip on that, of course, is if you don't want to have to have the additional expense of a pump, get a small hang on back, which is an all in one unit. Okay? So a small tank that you can use as a hospital. Small because you don't want to spend a lot of money on meds. It, it's um, with, with Paraclans, give you an example. Here's Paraclans. Each one of these packets, each one of these packets treats 10 gallons. One packet treats 10 gallons. If I, if I put the fish in, in a 29, a 30 gallon tank, I'm gonna have to use three packets for each treatment, three packets. By using that little 10 gallon, I use half of one packet. So this box is gonna go a lot, lot further, a pair of cleanse. So, <clears throat> give an example. So, use a small tank. Uh, be sure that you have a, a light that's adequate for that tank. Be sure you have a heater for that tank. And be sure to have some meds that you can use uh, that are appropriate for what you've observed in that fish, all right? So those are my tips that can save your fish. That can actually save your whole tank because if the fish ends up getting something that becomes very, very, uh, very, very aggravated and then becomes very contagious, you can end up wiping out an entire tank. So if you catch it early and you have these things on hand, you can uh, remove the fish quickly, treat them, get them back up to speed and then reintroduce them to the tank and uh, all the other fish are like nothing ever happened. They're all fine and healthy, okay? I'm actually gonna be doing that uh, pro procedure right now myself on a fish, all right? So uh, more about that on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. We'll talk about that and a whole lot of other stuff. Hope to see you then. That's 11 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you, my friends. You are appreciated. Bye-bye. This fish is between five and six inches. And you can see a, ten, a five gallon, five gallon tank is plenty for a little bit of quarantine, hospitalization and treatment. You can see I have the uh, hang on back filter with a little bit of pinky floss that had been floating along in the sump for probably about four or five months. A little hang on back filter is working fine. I've got the Phoenix. Phoenix Barracuda light on it. I put a uh, air pump with a small air stone. This is one of those air pumps by Cobalt that will continue running for 48 hours in the event of a power outage. 
I find the bigger fish have a much greater need for oxygen and will expire much faster than smaller fish in the event of a power outage. This is a good sized fish. It's my eye biter and though he was eating really well, he was giving me some long stringy poops and his stomach had sunken in just a little bit so I decided to go ahead and pull him out and he'll be getting a paracleanse treatment. I have a little thermometer in here to make sure that the heater is doing its job. There's a little aqua top heater and a couple cups of substrate that were taken from the established 210 gallon tank that you see here which is in the process of getting a water change.